All right, guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the difference between a syntax error and an exception because whenever you're just trying to fix some bugs in your program, they kind of look like the same thing, but there is a big difference between them and also how we can handle them or fix them in our program. So let me make a very simple program right now. What we're going to do is we're going to let the user input um, like a number. So we'll just say, what's your fave? number so what this is going to do is it's going to display a little prompt in the console whenever you run it and then the user types something in and we store it in the variable tuna now what I want to do is I actually want to take that and convert it to an int because if they enter 5 we want to make sure that Python doesn't treat that 5 as a string and actually converts it to an int or an integer number now Here's the problem that we may have. Check this out. Let me just complete this real quick by printing out tuna. See, whenever you run this right now, if the user enters something like, what's my favorite number? 20, and hit enter, it prints it out fine. But what if this happens? What if the user decides to enter um, dir and hit enter? Well, then we have a little problem right here because you can't convert dir to an integer. So even though we didn't have any typos and this code looks fine right now, an error still occurred because the user was an idiot. So that's the difference between a syntax error and, ex and an exception. Whenever I say a syntax error, that means a problem with your code. So instead of writing input, if you accidentally write imp, imp oot, of course, that's a typo. That's a syntax error. So whenever you run this, that's why it says invalid syntax. Whenever you see this, it means, hey, dude, you made a typo. And again, the other one is called an exception. And if we look down here, we can see that we don't actually see the word exception anywhere. Some IDEs may, but this one doesn't. We actually see this. It says value error. Now, a value error is a special type of an exception. This means that, okay, when we tried to convert this to another value, we had a problem. And there are different type of exceptions, and I'm going to show you guys how to handle them right now. So, of course, whenever you're making a regular piece of software, you want to allow for these problems to occur without breaking your entire program. Because if the user is using this piece of software and they accidentally hit the wrong key, you don't want your program to crash like mine just did. So I'm going to show you guys a really cool way to deal with these exceptions um, how you're supposed to. So what I want to do is I want to make my entire example in a um, while loop. And whenever I write while true, this means that the loop is going to keep going on and on and on forever until it breaks. So not once, not 10 times, just as many times as we want it to. And when we're finished, we'll just break it. So I'll show you guys the syntax of how to handle an exception now, or pretty much just think of it whenever the user messes something up. That's a really simple way to explain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the keyword try, and then I'm going to add a colon, and after that I'm going to type my code. Now this is the code that I think that the user could possibly mess something up. So instead of tuna, I'll actually name it something good this time. So int input what's your fave number Hoss. so again this is the line of code right here that I think okay maybe we're gonna get an error right here so I'm gonna put this in a try it's pretty much telling your computer try to do this but if something goes wrong then we'll tell you what to do later so then I'll do something like take whatever they take whatever number they entered in take 18 divide by just because I don't know we just need something to do and then I'll break so this is what we hopefully want to happen they're gonna enter some number like 6 okay perfect no problems it's gonna say 18 divide by 6 which is 3 and it breaks so our program ends however we know from the previous example that they can mess something up they can enter something like dir or they can enter um, I don't know maybe just some stupid symbols like this so we have to prepare 
um, for that without breaking our program. So remember, whenever they entered a word, it can't convert it to an int, and it was called a value error. So what we're going to say is if you come across a value error right there, then do this block of code right here, and I hit caps lock. So print, um, we'll say like uh, don't, we'll say make sure and enter a number. So basically what we have right here is a very simple program to handle a very basic exception. So we're saying first run this bit of code over and over and over again until the user finally gets it right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to allow them to enter a number and hopefully no problems work will occur and we can break out of the loop. However if we get a value error then what we can do is just give them a nice little prompt on the screen and be like, hey dude, you gotta try again. So I'll show you guys how to do that right now. So of course, the first thing that always happens is whatever is in the try. So it tries to do this code right here without any problems whatsoever. Now if this actually works fine and they just enter three, then it's gonna print and skip this. So this block of code only executes if you indeed get an error. So let me run this. And it says, what's your favorite number, Haas? Well, if you enter like Bucky, well then it said, okay, I tried to do this. I got an error. And then what I did is basically executed this code because it was value error. So then it loops again. Well, what if you're enter tuna? Nope, do it again. Um, Fart? Nope. Okay, what about six? Okay, finally that works. So finally we can do this and break out of the loop. Now, of course, a value error isn't the only type of an exception. A value error is basically when the, enter, when the user enters something that can't be um, converted to an integer. But what if the user enters something like this? All right, what's your favorite number? Well, what about zero? Okay, that's a valid integer. So let me hit enter. What the heck? Now we get in another type. And that's because of this. Whenever you take any number and divide it by zero, you get another type of exception called a zero division error. So let me copy this and I'll show you guys how to handle other errors as well. So this exception happens whenever they enter a string. Now a zero division error basically says, um, what can we say? We'll say don't pick zero. So I'm going to try this. If they entered a string, print this. If they entered zero, print this. And hopefully our program will work fine. So what's your favorite number, Haas? Zero. Don't pick zero. Uh, what about, I don't know, 54? OK, there we go. Now, there's one other thing that I want to tell you guys. And that is, what if you just want to ha handle errors um, in general? So you're going to say, an exception might occur right here, but I don't know if it's going to be a value error. I don't know if it's going to be a zero division error. I just want a broad way to handle every exception. Well, in that instance, you can just use the keyword except. Now, 99% of the time, I'm going to recommend not to do this, and this is why. Whenever you use except, it can hide a lot of your problems. So even though the user may enter something that's not valid, you're going to go ahead and execute code anyways without really knowing um, the source of your problem. So it's generally not a good idea to do this. However, you can um, pretty much, this is what's going to happen. I'll explain it this way. It's going to try to execute this code. And if a problem occurs, it's first going to check this one. OK, well, it wasn't a value error. Then it's going to check this one. Well, it wasn't a zero division error. And then it's going to say, OK, well, I'm just breaking out of your program. So that's why it's not a good idea. So that's what Accept does, and that's why I don't like it. Now, the one other thing that I want to um, tell you guys with exceptions before I let you guys go is a keyword called finally. So what finally is going to do is, of course, we have a couple options. We're going to execute this, or this, or this, 
or this, now only one of these can execute per loop, depending on if the user didn't do anything wrong or if they did. Now what finally does is it basically says, no matter if the code worked or if you got an exception, then execute this line of code no matter what. So this is optional. Um, it's an optional line of code you can have that says, execute this no matter what. Simple enough. And what can we put? We'll just put loop complete. So run it. So if they entered a stupid number or a stupid string and got an exception, or they entered a real number and it went fine, no matter what, the finally occurs every single time. All right, so that's pretty much it with exceptions. So whenever you think um, the user can break your code or cause it cause an issue with your software, then put it in a try block. Now, whenever you want to handle a specific type of exception, put accept in that type. Now, whenever you want to handle a general exception and you don't really know how the user is going to mess it up, then you can use accept. And whenever you want a certain bit of code to execute, no matter if the user had a uh, used your program correctly or caused an issue, then you can use finally. So yes, exceptions are kind of boring, but they're necessary, especially whenever we're making GUIs because, well, I'll show you guys then. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and well, see you in the next video.